Getting high quality audio from Serato into your live stream without having to use an external recorder, sound card, or a second laptop has never been easier. And today on Crossfader, I'm gonna show you how it's done. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's DJ Holland, and today I'm gonna to show you a really simple method of getting high quality audio from your Serato into your live streams without having to buy a sound card, an external capture device, or by using a second laptop. So this trick is really, really easy and it's been built into Serato version 2.4 and above. So you will need to update your Serato to that version if you haven't done so already. But we're gonna do this on Windows and on Mac. It's a very similar process, but we're gonna start with Windows first. So Mac users, if you need to skip this part, just look in the comments below or on the timestamps and you'll be able to skip straight to the Mac section. Let's begin. So in this application and this uh, demo, I'm going to show you Serato DJ Pro being used with OBS, but you can use this with Serato DJ Lite or in fact, any other streaming application that you choose. So if we go into Serato, Serato DJ Pro and Serato DJ Lite from versions 2.4 forward have this built in. So if we go up to the settings in the top right hand corner and then click on audio, you can see that we have this area at the bottom that says make audio available to other applications. Now, if we go ahead and try and click that, Serato's warning us that we don't have uh, the third party application installed. Now on Windows, this is called virtual audio cable. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and we need to download virtual audio cable. So click the download button and you are taken to a Serato help page where this entire process is broken down for you. But don't worry, we're going to go through every single step in this video now. So here we are on the Serato uh, guide. So we need to scroll down to where it says Windows. And you see we've got some instructions here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download virtual audio cable. So if we click this link, you'll see it's automatically downloaded that straight away into my computer's download folder and this is downloaded in a zip file. So what we need to do is we need to open this up. So now this is opened up, you can see that it's opened up the zip file. So we're still in the preview of the zip folder. So the first thing we need to do before installing, we need to extract the zip file to a, another folder. So I'm gonna click extract all here. And I'm just gonna download it into that area there. So download FAC64, that's absolutely fine. Click Extract. And you can see it's opened up another window. So I've got my Extract folder here and I've got my Extracted folder. So we're gonna shut down this Extract one. We don't need that anymore. And now we've got this area here where we can click the Setup. Now you can see we've got two setups here. One's for 64 and one's normal. So if you're on a 64-bit machine, which I would believe most of you will be by now, but if you're on a 64-bit machine, you're going to need to use the Setup 64. Now, if you're unsure, you can very quickly check what system you're on. Just type down here, this PC, open this up, and then right-click on this PC, click Properties, and you can see system type 64-bit operating system. So what we wanna do is, because we're on the 64-bit machine, we're gonna click Setup 64. We're gonna get the warning, you know, obviously telling us, do we want to install this? Yes, we do. Would you like to install this on your computer? Yes, I would. Accept the uh, terms and conditions, and then it's gonna ask us where we want to download it into. Standard file path's absolutely fine, so just hit the Install button and this will now run through the installation process. It's not a big application, so it shouldn't take too long to get installed. There we go. Now this warning box is gonna pop up. What this is warning is, is in the process of installing the virtual audio cable, the software has now changed your default output and input on your computer. Now, what this means is, 
So when your computer boots up, um, obviously your speakers within the computer are defaulted to be your output. So if I open up a YouTube video, if I open up Spotify, um, you know, the speakers are going to play the audio out of them. This program has just changed the speakers to not be the default. So the next time I boot this computer up, it will not play out of the speakers. And that's not what we want. So what we need to do is we need to go into the system audio preferences and change that back to the default. So it's asking us here, do we want to open the system audio preference window? Yes, we do. Click yes. And you see here, playback. So this is what is used for your computer's output. So when I'm on Spotify, when I'm playing a song, what is the audio going to play out of? And you see that the default device is the virtual audio cable that we've just installed. We don't want that. We actually want it to be the speakers. So click on the speakers, click set default. Now head into recording. You can see we've got the inbuilt microphone on this PC. And we've also got virtual audio cable, which again has been set as the default device. We don't want that. Click back on the microphone, hit set default. Now we've changed the defaults of the computer back to the correct inputs and outputs. We can click OK. We can click OK here and we have installed successfully. So that's now shut down. We can now go to our downloads folder. We can find the um, zip file and the unzipped file that we've just downloaded. And we can delete these because we no longer need them on the machine. The installation is complete. So now we can close this. We can close the Serato help window and we can head back into Serato. So we're back in Serato now. And what we can do now is we can actually tick that box. Now, now we've installed the virtual audio cable application, we can tick this and this is making our audio available to other applications. So what we need to do is we need to go into OBS or your streaming application of choice. So we'll just minimize this for the time being. And I'm gonna use OBS Studio for this example. So what we need to do is we need to set up the audio input device. So just as we would using an external recording device, an external sound card, or even an external microphone, we need to click on the sources, click add, and let's click audio input capture. So we can name this device. So I'm just going to call it Serato feed. Click OK. And then on device, we need to click virtual audio cable. And you can see line one in brackets virtual audio cable. Click this. Click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the desktop audio. I'm going to mute the microphone. And you can see I'm also going to mute the video capture device. So the only only sort of audio that should be coming through now is Serato feed, the device we've just set up. So let's go ahead and test it. Let's go back into Serato. I'm just gonna load a track up from the Crossfader free music pack. Remember, if you don't already have this free music pack full of acapellas, house, drum and bass, and much, much more, just click the link in the top right-hand corner. But let's go and get a track loaded in Serato. Let's get it playing and let's see if the feed is coming through to OBS. And there we have it. We can see that that audio is running through into Serato clean as a whistle. Now you will know that it's going into the reds on OBS. Don't worry, if you actually look underneath the line on OBS, you'll see that the zero is at the top of the red. So going near that, it's just a warning. You're not actually clipping, you're not getting any distortion because you're not going past that zero. If your Serato feed input is going all the way up to that red and staying there, then all we need to do is go into Serato and turn down the master just up here. But like I say, you don't actually need to do this. You can run this at full because you're not clipping. And there we have it, it's as simple as that. So if you're using Serato DJ Pro or Serato DJ Lite, you're going to need to be on version 2.4 or, or newer. So this is baked into Serato. You cannot use this application with an older version of Serato than that. 
But being baked into Serato, it's really, really easy to get set up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Serato on our Mac. Once we're in Serato, we need to head up to the settings. This can be found in the top right hand corner, this little cog icon. Click on that and head to audio. Now in audio, you'll notice there's this new option down at the bottom there that says audio output. And there's a little box that says make audio available to other applications. So we need to tick this box. When we tick it, you'll see that it says we need to download a program called I show you audio capture. So if we click the download button, it'll open up a web browser and take us straight to a very helpful Serato guide. Now this Serato guide um, has all the download links you need for both Windows and Mac. So we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find the Mac version and we're gonna click install. So once we've clicked that link, it will take us to the I show you audio capture download page. Now um, we need to know which version of Mac we're on. As you can see, um, it's on the Mojave and earlier page at the moment, but if we're running a newer OS such as Catalina, uh, we need to click this button here. So if you don't know what version of Mac OS you're on, go to the top left hand corner, click the little Apple logo and click about this Mac. There you can see I'm on Mac OS Catalina version 10.15.6. So I can close this down. I'm on Catalina, so obviously I'm gonna click Catalina go here. Now I'm gonna click the download installer and it's gonna download a DMG folder into my downloads. Click to open this and it'll open the uh, DMG and mount it. So this is uh, gonna open up the installer, which is this .pkg file here. Double click this and it will warn us sometimes, this may vary, it depends on your settings in your Mac, but um, it's warning me that I cannot open this, I cannot download this cause uh, it's not been downloaded from the App Store. So if you do see this message, go to System Preferences, go to Security and Privacy, and then we need to change this down here. You can see it says, I show you captured 1.0.5 was blocked. We can click the Open Anyway button. Click open and you see the installer has now launched. So we can click continue, again, continue, continue and install. It warns us that we may need to restart our computer after. Um, so that's absolutely fine. Just click continue installation and then you will need to enter your password or if you've got Touch ID, you can use that. Installation usually takes a minute or two. Don't worry if it's lagging a little bit. It's not the fastest thing to install ever. Sometimes you will end up, if it's your first time of using uh, this application and installing it, you will get a pop-up that says that you your security system preferences have blocked this application from being installed. Now your Mac will default to try and tell you to press OK. Don't, press the button to the left. This will open up the security panel that I just showed you earlier, and it's very much the same process. It will show you that the application has been blocked and you just need to press the install anyway button. And then you will return to the installation has been successful page, and then you can go ahead and restart your computer. Now the computer's restarted, we can go ahead and reopen Serato. And we want to go back to the same area we was at before. So open up the preferences, go to audio. And now if we tick make audio available, it just ticks. There's no more warnings to download another piece of software. So now this is ticked, we can go ahead and open up our streaming application of choice. So I use OBS. I'm just going to go ahead and open up OBS. So now OBS is opened up, what we need to do is we need to set an audio input device up. So this is normally where we would tell OBS to capture the audio from say an external sound card, but because we're using an internal device, it's slightly different. So create a new audio input device within your scene, and we're gonna call this Serato Feed, press OK. And then on the device, we need to click the drop down menu and we need to click the I show you audio capture. So once that's selected, press okay. You can see here now in my audio mixer, I've got Serato feed at the bottom. So we need to test that this is working. So head into Serato, 
get a track loaded up. So I'm just gonna use one from the Crossfader Free Music Pack. Again, a link to this is in the top right hand corner if you haven't already downloaded this. So I'm gonna load a track in and I'm gonna get that track playing. Use Alt and Tab to go back to OBS. And there we go. You can see in the Serato feed, we've got the music playing through nice and clear. And there we have it, it's as easy as that. Just by using these third party applications, we can significantly increase the quality of the audio on our live streams without having to buy a sound card or use an external computer, any of that nonsense. It's a really quick and easy tip. And the best thing about it all is that it's free. So if you have learned something new in this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It helps us out massively. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, make sure that bell ticks, and you'll be notified when we upload more videos just like this. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for sticking around, and I'll see you in another one sometime soon. Take care.